Before we go tonight, a few more thoughts about Aretha Franklin. I can tell you as a musician, you couldn't help but be influenced by her music because it touched virtually every genre. I spent a lot of time in my office today culling through her recordings, discovering songs I hadn't heard or thought of in years. While realizing the futility of trying to choose a favorite, so many to pick from. But let me leave you tonight with one that especially touched me. It's called Angel. Thank you for watching and good night. Gotta find me an angel. Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. How is 18 months considered justice when it led to the death of a man, but, um, you know, or was this just a win for the office? So it is, um, in my estimation, in my professional judgment, um, justice in this case, in the... 90 some cases that I've taken to trial over the years, I don't win them all. And I will stand up in very difficult cases and try them if justice demands it. We begin with new information tonight on the man involved in a fight outside a Fargo bar in downtown Fargo that led to another man's death. Darren Patterson is being sentenced to 18 months in prison as part of a plea deal. Patterson had pleaded guilty earlier this year to negligent homicide and aggravated assault in the death of Jamie Grant of Fargo. Valley News Team's Veronica Marshall has been following this story, joins us now with more. Veronica? So it took well over a year for prosecutors to come up with today's sentencing. As previously mentioned, Patterson is the man behind the death of Jamie Grant of Fargo. Court documents say Patterson got a and Grant got into a brawl outside the Hodo in downtown Fargo when Patterson punched Grant to the ground. Now today was a moment of truth for prosecutors and the defense. In courtroom 201, the judge accepted Patterson's 18-month sentence for Grant's death. But Patterson may not end up serving the entire 18 months. Ryan Youngren, the prosecutor in this case, says Patterson will be eligible for parole. Despite this, Youngren says, from a professional point of view, justice was served, even though that may be difficult for some people to accept. As a father and a husband, I look at this and say, you know, no time is enough. But then I have to step back and look at it in my professional perspective and uh, um, say, okay, what kind of sentences do we get in these types of cases? What's the likelihood that we're going to win at trial versus lose at trial? Um, and it's always a balancing act. So tonight on Valley News Live at 9 on Fargo CW and Valley News Live at 10, we'll hear more from the prosecution about the details of this case and why Patterson could have won at trial. All right, thanks, Veronica. Let's turn our attention now to the weather where warmer temps return today and could be a sign of things to come. Let's find out about tonight's temps first. Hutch is here with the latest. Oh, we have a uh, hot air chunk all the way from the Bismarck area to Fargo where we have mid 80s to low 90s right now. A little cooler up to the north as we have a little boundary working its way down from the south and a few showers along that boundary as well. The gray you see ahead of the clouds, well, that is the smoke returning to the valley. We have an air quality alert through Sunday. It's going to be hot as we go through the weekend, but tonight temperatures of the 70s, quiet weather, just getting increasingly more smoky. Hour by hour details on the close of our work week and the weekend ahead here in a minute. All right, thanks, Hutch. And make sure you have the Valley News Live Storm Team weather app so you can keep up with the weather anytime, anywhere. You'll get the latest forecasts and conditions so you can plan your day. Just search VNL Weather in the App Store and download it for free. A local business owner took to social media to warn about two women who he says stole items from his store yesterday afternoon. The owner says when he ran after the pair out into the parking lot, they threw the stolen items back into the store. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley talked with a store owner who says he's glad he was watching his surveillance cameras. 
When two women walked into this antique shop yesterday afternoon, the store owner says they were acting kind of strange. Maybe they don't know I have a camera here. As the two moved to the back of his store, he says he started watching them closely on his surveillance cameras. One of them uh, put it the stuff in her purse. And the other girl with tattoo and orange hair, she was watching the door. If I'm coming, they will stop. He says the pair stayed in his store for about 20 more minutes until they went out to their car. She go outside and I follow her by my phone. And I ask her, outside, are you done shopping? She said, uh, yes, I'm done. And I said, okay, can I see your purse? She said, no, you can't. Okay, okay, fine. I'm going to call cops. And she said, no, 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 don't call cops. Al Ramadan says as he went back into his store and started dialing for police, one of the women walked back in. She threw this stuff from her purse. It's not expensive stuff. All this may be around... $25, but I don't like what they did. They stole him. He then reported it to police. However, a language barrier made police think there wasn't a crime committed. However, after I talked with police today, officers are now following up on the incident. A strange story, you know. El Ramadan also took to Facebook yesterday to warn others to keep an eye out. I have all the texts, more than 400 texts from people, messages from people, and they are, actually they are happy about what I did because I I will warn other people and other stores. Al Ramadan has had his store for about three years and has only dealt with shoplifting one other time. And he hopes it doesn't happen again and that the women involved are caught. In Fargo, Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. So far, there are no charges against the two women involved. If you know anything about this, you're urged to call Fargo police. Drew Wrigley has been nominated by President Donald Trump for the state's top federal prosecuting job. Current U.S. Attorney Chris Myers of North Dakota had removed himself from consideration. The former Lieutenant Governor of North Dakota still must be confirmed by the Senate. Wrigley was U.S. Attorney from 2001 to 2009. He was Lieutenant Governor from 2010 to 2016 and was considered a top GOP contender for Governor in 2016 but decided not to run. Wrigley's most high-profile case as U.S. attorney was the conviction of Alfonso Rodriguez Jr., who was sentenced to death for the killing of Drew Shadeen. A Hughes 269C helicopter crashed in a wheat field in southeast Kindred earlier this morning. The pilot of the helicopter told us the crash happened because of a mechanical issue. The pilot described feeling a snap while in the air, then says the power to the rotors failed on the helicopter. Once the pilot quickly landed, he escaped before the helicopter tipped over and started on fire. Nobody was injured during the crash. The Federal Aviation Administration is currently investigating the crash and will keep you updated when more information is released. You can go to our website, valleynewslive.com. The United States has seen more than 100 cases of measles across 21 states so far this year, one case being diagnosed in the Twin Cities. According to North Dakota's health department, this state hasn't seen a case of the measles since 2011. The MMR vaccination rate for kindergartners in North Dakota is nearly 95 percent. Meanwhile, Minnesota recently saw its first case this year when an unvaccinated child returning from visiting Africa. That's why experts say it's crucial to vaccinate your children. Measles can kill you. Measles is about 90% contagious, so about 90% of people who are unvaccinated that come in contact with someone with measles will get the measles virus, and then the vaccine is safe and effective. We're told that measles vaccinations are 95 to 98% successful when given both doses. Today marks a milestone achievement for the Sanford Medical Center as it has cleared the final hurdle to become a verified level one adult trauma center. The medical center makes the Fargo facility the only location with a level one adult trauma status between Seattle and Minneapolis. The trauma center is required to have a certain number of surgeons and anesthesiologists and specialty services on duty 24 seven. During a news conference today, surgeon Stephen Briggs says the center will help give patients the best possible care in the shortest amount of time possible. The trauma center will also provide training for students at North Dakota State University. Coming up on Valley News Live at 6, we're going to go out to the Twin Cities where the Democrats are moving on from the primary election.
The Minnesota DFL is working to recover following testy primary campaigns. We hear from party leaders about how they hope to unify.